Hi, I'm Lynn Holt. I'm the Director of Youth Ministries at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Charlotte. And I'm Matt Addington, and I'm the Director of Youth Ministry in, at St. Mark's in Huntersville. And we're here today to talk to you about Episcopal Outreach Camp that's held in Charlotte, in the Charlotte Convocation. We've been um, gathering all uh, any churches in the Charlotte Convocation for the last 17 years um, who would like to do uh, ministry together in various ways, but the main thing that we do together is this Episcopal Outreach Camp. Each summer we have a, a mission experience for middle schoolers. Um, any church in the convocation is invited, and some years we have 11 or so, some years we have 7. It just depends on what the calendar looks like for each church. But we wanted to provide a mission experience for middle schoolers that was manageable for them at their developmental age. We spend three nights in a church in Charlotte, usually. Um, the kids sleep in the youth spaces of the church, and um, we shower locally, and we uh, eat together um, and do mission work that's age appropriate. And we hope that this will lead them to um, continuing to do mission trips as they get older and to just to teach them that outreach and caring for others is an important part of everyone's ministry in this church. I got involved with Episcopal Outreach Camp about six years ago um, when I was first hired at St. Mark's. I heard about it um, and thought this is a really great idea for, for middle schoolers to kind of get their feet wet because it's one thing for them um, to do a mission trip in, in Charlotte locally um, and learn about what it means to do ministry um, locally. It's another thing for them to do it in Costa Rica and that be their first experience. And um, so, so we wanted to provide them with something that was really, really meaningful, like Lynn said. Um, and one of the things that really sticks out in my mind was um, one year we were uh, working at a slave cemetery and kind of our job for the day was to, to shovel mulch into a path and um, help create a really nice space for, for the slaves that were buried there. And um, a few, it started pouring down rain and a few of the kids were asking, why are we doing this? Why are we here? What's the point? Um, and so it, it allowed for an impromptu conversation about, you know, these are these were these were people, and they matter. And and Jesus said, um, love your neighbors yourself. And so we're here loving these people, even though in, in the in their home, even though they're no longer with us here. Um, and so after having that conversation, um, it really changed the demeanor and and the energy level in the group, and they were excited and. Um, really felt like they were connected to these slaves who had who had gone before um, and really connected as, as a part of being a church and doing something for somebody else. Okay. Um, part of what we provide through the camp experience is a t-shirt every year and it is always it goes with the theme of the year. Last year we talked about our, our theme was home sweet home um, and what that was about was helping to fix or um, improve people's homes but we also include all of God's creatures in that so we went to the park and cleaned up all the debris that was in the park so that um, people could use it but we were thinking of it as an, an animal's home home to all the animals and um, we were much quicker than we thought we would be getting this work done so after we had made sure we got everything done we came back to uh, St. Peter's to um, wait for our worship to begin and as we were sitting in the youth room it was a collection of all different kids from all the different churches we divide the kids up so that they will get to know um, other middle schoolers from other Episcopal churches throughout the convocation so that's not just Charlotte um, but we were sitting in the youth room and we started a theological discussion that was really amazing and wonderful and the middle schoolers were asking all kinds of questions about about the Episcopal Church in general, about what we were doing, why we were doing it, and it was there was some deep thought from these middle schoolers. And then as each team, each group, finished their work and came in to the youth room, they all just sat down and joined the discussion and continued it. So it was, by the time all the groups were back, it was a wonderful discussion with 
40 or so middle schoolers and their leaders about what the church means to them, why we do the work, why we want to get to know each other. And then we went to our closing worship um, up in the church, and it was just a wonderful transition. And I think that made the worship even more special to the kids. Yeah. Um, as a part of, of being the Episcopal Church, oftentimes we forget that, that the Episcopal Church is much bigger than, than the space that, that, that we meet in on a Sunday. Um, and Episcopal Outreach Camp does a really great job of incorporating things from um, the church, you know, across the Atlantic, the Anglican Church or the um, New Zealand Church or the Church in New Zealand. And one of the one of the the ways that we do that is is through worship. Um, we we have worship. We do morning um, and evening worship, and and one of my favorite worship services is is the Taze service. Um, and we incorporate different prayers and different um, things from other um, Anglican traditions into that service. Um, another way that, that we um, kind of help people know that the Episcopal Church is much bigger than, than what they see on a normal Sunday are the Millennium Development Goals. Um, for two or three themes of the camp, um, we did MDGs um, where we focused on I think there's nine of them, um, about how they as a middle schooler can really make a difference in the world and, and change the world and make it a better place for, for everybody, including, you know, pregnant mothers in Africa, um, HIV AIDS patients um, in Africa. So the years that we have done the um, MDG uh, theme, we often it's often more educational than actual hands-on work, um, but one year they did skits. Do you remember oh, the skit yeah, year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was really funny to watch a middle school boy playing a pregnant mother in Africa with a mosquito net over yes. him. So they really got into it and learned a lot about how to help people all over the world through the greater church that they belong to. Um, another way that, that we really... Um kind of did a hands-on MDG thing is we took them to a church that that um, had a community garden and um, housed some refugees and um, we worked in that garden and we talked with the refugees and then um, after being outside you know all day in the summer in the heat we brought them in and said okay it's lunchtime and it's going to be a poverty simulation so um, <laughs> 80 to 90 percent of the kids only got a bowl of rice um, that day for lunch because that's what the majority of the world lives on and that was um, a huge kind of eye-opener hands-on education moment um, and they weren't real happy with us but that was okay. <laughs> they learned a lot. They did. <laughs> but that leads us to um, how we get a lot, done, a mm -hmm. lot of the stuff done that we do. Um, since we've been doing this for so long, we've done 16 of them, we um, basically know how to divide up the tasks that need to come together to make it a complete camp. So we gather for three or four meetings, mm -hmm. um, the, the youth leaders that are involved, um, starting usually in about February, leading up to the camp, and we just divide up the jobs. We, we try to have three different themes so that if a, a teenager um, comes three years in their seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grades, they will get a different, little bit different experience. Um, so one person will, one of the youth leaders will say, I'll do the worship booklet. Um, and this is an example of one of the worship booklets that, that we do. And it, as Matt described, it has um, services from around the different kinds of Anglican mm -hmm. traditions. Um, and then someone will say, well, I'll take the food this year. And, we, and they plan the meal and get the food and plan uh, parents who will come help to cook it mm -hmm. on the nights that we cook. No. Um, another another really great part about um, Episcopal Outreach Camp is um, it's not eight hour long mission experiences. Um, during the evenings, we kind of we kind of shift gears and and, and offer them some really great um, fellowship and community time. Um, and part of that also gets kind of fleshed out in that meeting. You know, when I'll find the parent with the lake house and I'll take care of looking at baseball tickets and. I'll find the Pizza Hut that's closest to where we're going to be. I'll call the YMCA's and get the showers set up. Um, because 
we've learned through experience that, that most middle schoolers can't handle a full day of intense manual labor. Um, so, some days I can't handle a full day of um, shoveling gravel in a parking lot. Um, but it's also important um, to us in this camp that the kids have fellowship mm -hmm. opportunities with other um, youth outside of their own youth group so that they meet other people. It also helps them to want to go to diocesan events mm -hmm. because they want to see their friends from St. Mark's or St. Martin's or whatever. So um, the fellowship part of it is very important. The wor All the worships that we do morning and night and then the closing Eucharist and the fun. Yeah. Um, that's all important just as the work is mm -hmm. so that we give them a full experience.